his or her style on others. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Toastmaster of How many of you um, have studied uh, in calculus in school? Show of hands. And how many of you uh, enjoyed calculus in school? Okay, good. So um, I was one of those students who really enjoyed calculus. In fact, I liked it so much that when I went to college, I chose to do a bachelor's in math. And as the first course of my bachelor's in math, I took in calculus. And I did really well. In fact, I did so well that my professor asked me to be the teaching assistant for the same course in the next semester. And I immediately said yes, because it was a job that paid well. I knew the, the material well, and all I needed to do was give my understanding of calculus to the students. So I took the job. Um, as part of my job, I had to conduct one-on-one -on -one sessions with those students who were not doing so well. And I thought I did my job okay. And I, uh, I explained to them how to do things exactly in my way. And I answered all of their questions as specifically as I could. This was in the first four weeks. And then in the fifth week, I um, had to do a feedback a session with my professor. And I was like really enthusiastic. Um, and I thought when I met him, he would be really uh, congratulating me um, on a job well done. But he said to me, point blank, you are doing a bad job. He told me that the feedback the students gave him was that I seemed more interested in showing off how well I did other than make them understand in a way that they could feel comfortable. Uh, fellow Toastmasters and guests, I was shocked. Uh, I was devastated. I really liked this job, but it seemed like I was not doing well. And I went back to my room and I thought, what could I do to do this job well? And I understood that the real problem was that my communication style was not good. I thought up to that point, being a good teacher just meant sharing the facts and the figures and the methods with students. I did not know that to be a good teacher, you need to be supportive, persuasive, and direct in what the students need. And it was at that point that I resolved to change. And the change I decided was that I would make my communication style flexible according to the needs of each student. So, for example, there was one student who was not interested in, in calculus, but he was 
were really interested in cars. And I devised a way to explain into him calculus in the way of cars. So we made a list of his favorite cars and then we analyzed how he could use formulas from calculus to calculate the acceleration and the speed of cars. And he became so enthusiastic that he went from being a C student to an A student. There was another student whose main issue was that she could not organize her time well. She knew the material, but she just could not submit her assignments on time. I thought that the best communication method for her was for me to be as direct as possible. So I set up a session for her exactly two days before the assignment was, was due. And I gave her a step-by-step -step plan that he could follow. And I told her, if you follow this plan, you will be able to do the assignment on time. And she did well. She went from a B student to an A student. And slowly I saw that all of my students have started to do well. And by the end of the semester, all of them had passed the course. Um, and the professor was really happy with me. Um, and I told him that this had been uh, the best learning experience of my life. Because that was the semester that I really learned how to communicate well. And the main thing I learned was that to communicate well, I need to let go of my ego to the point that I can make space for the other person. And then I need to be flexible according to that person's needs. And since then I have been inflexible in my communication um, and I have done well. Thank you.